All right, welcome to lesson 9.3.3 here. Um, the main point of our lesson on, on this one, this is kind of the second half of 9.3.3 here. The main point of this one is to kind of go over terminology and uh, to make sure we all have this. So please make sure you get this in your notes. Um, if I remember correctly in your test, it's worth 15, 14 or 15 points in your test. Um, just kind of being able to match up this terminology um, with a question on the test. So just make sure you kind of understand this. All right, number one is a prime number. What are prime numbers? Well, prime numbers are the numbers two. Let's get my little thing out of there. Three. Four would not be a prime number. And the reason four is not is because one times four is four, but also two times two. So there's a different way to get to four than just multiplying by one. Um, two and three, though, you can only multiply by one times two to get to two, and one times three to get to three. There's no other way to get there. Five is another prime number. Six would not be. In fact, you're going to notice four was not because you can multiply by two by two. Six would not be because you can go two times three. All even numbers from here on out will not be prime numbers. Um, but other prime numbers would be seven, not nine, because nine would be three times three but 11 would make it, and then 13 would make it, 15 would not, but 17 would, so on and so forth. Those are what the prime numbers are. We're only, the only way to get to them is by going one times the number to get to your prime number. If that is your only way to get there, is by multiplying by one, then that's a prime number, which means composite numbers. This should be kind of a simple thought for you all. Composite numbers are going to be those numbers that are not prime. For example, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, not a lot, uh, 12, 14, 15, 16, and so on and so forth. And so composite numbers are the numbers where something else besides 1 can multiply to get to those. So you have options on how to get to those numbers. Hang on here. I've got to pause the video for a moment. All right, and I'm back now. Sorry about that. All right, now we're talking about rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Well, rational numbers are all of your prime and composite numbers. So prime, whoops, I don't want to put that up there. Let's put this down here. Would be your prime numbers. Would be your composite numbers. They would be your integers, which include all the negatives, integers. They would be all of your um, um, bu -bu 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 fractions. Any fraction is a rational number. So you might be noticing um, rational numbers are the numbers we've been dealing with our whole lives. Okay, prime numbers, composite numbers, integers, fractions. They're all those kind of things. Here's the general rule on a rational number. Okay, is that a rational number... Um, mm -hmm. It either, um, it, it's a number that comes to an end, okay, it either ends, or the number repeats. What do I mean by repeating? So if you think of like one-third, one-third is a fraction that would repeat it. It comes out to be 0 .33333, you can predict the next number, um, it, you know, it's so... It, so it's repeating. So a repeating number is a nice way of saying that is you can predict. You can predict the next number that comes in a repeating number. Um, if you ever take an example of like 2 divided by 11, I believe 2 divided by 11, I'm doing this off the top of my head. And in fact, here I've got a calculator, let me just do this. 2 divided by 11, don't want to tell you a lie here. Yes, I would have been right. It's 0.1818818. So if the last number I told you was an 8, you know the next number would be a 1. Or if I told you the last number I had told you was a 1, you'd know the next one's going to be an 8. It's very predictable. So rational numbers are numbers that either end or they repeat, which means take a guess what an irrational number would be. An irrational number would be one that never ends and, not or, but and, never repeats. Okay. The most famous the most famous 
um, irrational number is pi, spelled P-I, not P-I-E. So the most famous rational number is pi. Um, that's one we know of. It's 3.14 dot dot dot. Some many of you know that far more than I do, and I don't really care because it's not that important to know it to the 2,000th digit. But if you take a look at pi, in fact, many uh, some people have. They've even ran computer programs on pi. They've brought it out to like the millionth digit, and it's still not repeating. So um, people have really been obsessed with trying to prove that it could, and, and it just never does. So pi does not ever repeat. But there are more numbers that don't ever repeat. So for example, um, I'll get back to the numbers I'm writing down here in a moment. These numbers are, as they're written currently right here, are, as you can see up here, some of them are prime numbers, some of them are composite numbers, so there's no trick as far as that goes. But here's where the trick comes in. And I want to take something here. We're going to make this an infinite cloner right up here. Okay. But the square root of 2 is an irrational number. It never ends. It never repeats. The square root of 3 is an irrational number. The square root of 5, the square root of 6, the square root of 7, the square root of 8, and the square root of 9. What you may have noticed that I did here is I, or not 9, but 10. I skipped a few numbers here. In fact, from 3 to 5, the number I skipped right here was 4. If you remember in the last video, 4 was a perfect square. The square root of 4 actually equaled 2. So that would actually be a rational number, the square root of 4. So, in fact, I can write that up here. 1, 4, 9, 16. These numbers up here, 1, 4, the square root of 1 would e actually equal 1. The square root of 4 would equal 2. The square root of 9 would equal 3. The square root of 16 would equal 4. So if that makes sense to you. So those are actually rational numbers. But these down here, square root of 5, 6, 7, 8, are all irrational. If you put them in your calculator, you take the square root of them, you're going to notice you get some weird decimal, and it doesn't repeat. And if you've got uh, 2,000 hours on your time, go ahead and take those up to the billionth digit and uh, learn for yourself that it never repeats. Otherwise, you can just trust the computers that have done it before you. All right. So those are your prime, your composite, your rational, and your irrational numbers. Um, a terminating decimal less than 1. Well, let's just think about the terminology there. Terminating means that it comes to an end. The number ends. So, for example, a terminating decimal less than 1 would be 0.3. Another terminating decimal less than 1 would be 0.125. Another terminating decimal, if they ever had it, would be 0.45376, or whatever I just said there, 453267. If it comes to an end, that's a terminating decimal less than 1. There's no number in front of the decimal, and, and the decimal stops, okay? A non-terminating decimal. Well, what is a non-terminating? It means it never dies, it never ends, it never comes to a conclusion. Something like that would be a 0.3 repeating. One-third, or 0.3 repeating, would be one that never ends. You know, it's a non-terminating decimal, less than one. You could do two-thirds. That's another one. But you know what another one would be? would be the, uh, um, nope, I'm lying about there. So, you know, so numbers like one-third, one, two-thirds, one, two um, or if you go to your elevenths and take one-eleventh, two-elevenths, three-elevenths, four-elevenths, um, are other ones. Um, another one, which are much harder to see if you do it, would be like if you take three-sevenths, three divided by seven, you get a weird number that repeats every six numbers, but it's hard to see that on a calculator. But uh, four-sevenths would be one that does repeat, even though it's hard to see it on a calculator. So, All right. So that is your list right there of uh, numbers and terminology that you need to know and understand. If you have questions, please come and see me. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow in class. Bye-bye.